rotating, so hello to you. Um, but what I wanted to do here real quick is just make uh, a quick informal live video on the recall or really just delay of the Jack Wolf Knives Little Bro Jack. So um, I've been really fortunate that Ben has been sending these knives out to me uh, ahead of the releases, ahead of the drops, so that I can check them out, provide feedback, and also you know do videos. I've done videos on all three uh, designs that have come out or that uh, he has sent me. The Sharpshooter Jack, the Laid Back Jack, and then this. I did an unboxing on the Little Bro Jack. This is the third knife from Jack Wolf Knives. I actually had planned to have a video, a review, as well as history on the pattern, which this is a, a boy's knife, hi Max the Maker, um, <clears throat> come out tomorrow, the day before when the drop was scheduled for the 17th of June here in 2022. Um, but uh, Ben has decided to de delay the release due to some of these knives at least having blade wrap. So first of all, I wanna explain what blade wrap is. I've, I've done videos on it. I talk about it a lot in my videos. And actually, before I get into all of that, if I look sweaty, it's because I am. Um, I have been uh, working outside for the past few hours here. Um, switched into a knife thought shirt because my other shirt uh, was soaked. So it was very hot and humid here. And I'm not a whole lot of a, a hot weather person. But anyway, I've done videos on blade wrap. I've talked about blade wrap. Um, uh, the Marshallist, you've always got the, the, the best comments there. Um, but it's when there is deformation or deformation and, uh, and or edge damage, however you want to say it, due to the edge hitting the back spring within the blade well. And so there's different ways it can happen. There is a pin that goes through the back spring right around in this area on most, if not all, slip joints that use a back spring. Uh, so it's often there, um, but it can also be like on the um, Cotele Asabo. I'm always terrible at pronouncing um, <laughs> words, uh, but <laughs> the knife from Knives of France that I uh, reviewed recently, the barrel knife, intentionally has blade wrap at, at the tip um, to, to stop the blade. So it can also happen towards the tip or at the belly. Um, something that unfortunately I seem to get a lot on, uh, GECs and things like that, but I really don't like it. Uh, it's just something that happens though on slip joints because they can over travel. So when you close the knife here, this kick right here, don't know what happened there. Um, I don't know if it stopped alive for a second or not, but, um, when, uh, the, the blade closes, this kick stops it. It hits the back spring right about here, and that stops the blade. But because the spring isn't fixed, it can go both directions, right? It presses into the tang, into the, the, the tang of the blade, um, but it can also be pressed backwards, as you see happening here, right? So as I open the knife, the spring gets pressed backwards beyond the spine or beyond the, the frame. That can happen from the kick hitting the spring. The momentum pushes it beyond uh, flush there. And so then the blade can tr continue to travel downward and, um, <laughs> very sweaty here, uh, and hit the back spring. So that's what blade wrap is. And you know, it is a defect, right? Because then the edge is not going to cut as well. Uh, <clears throat> Now, there's two ways that it can really happen. That's one way, by closing the knife, it can over travel. But also, you can actually push the blade down into the blade well, like that, and it could push against the spring. Um, so, I noticed that I had blade wrap on this knife, uh, let's see, about a, a week and a half ago. Um, so, the week, before the rendezvous, basically. Um, but I thought that I, I had taken this knife on a canoe trip and I thought that I had sat on it hard enough that it had pressed down in because I'd had the knife for a week or so um, before it got the blade wrap. <clears throat> so that's not usually how it goes. Usually 
you know, the first few closings, if there's going to be blade wrap, you'll see it. Um, so I thought that I had sat on it and pressed it down it. So uh, this past weekend was the Great Eastern Cutlery Rendezvous. Speaking of, real quick, um, I intend to do a video on the Rendezvous this year. I haven't done a video on the Rendezvous. I wanted to get a bunch of actual film from the Rendezvous and you know have more of an in-depth look at it. I didn't get as much as I wanted, so it'll probably be mostly a tabletop video uh, as I've done in the past, but <clears throat> with a little bit sprinkled in. But anyway, um, at the Rendezvous, Ben was there. I got to meet Ben last year at the Rendezvous. It was really great. I really loved his enthusiasm, his energy, uh, and his vision for these Jack Wolf knives. And that's kind of how uh, I found myself getting to review them, which I'm really happy to do. So I saw Ben and I told him, you know, my that this had blade wrap. And at that point I had sharpened it out. It didn't seem to have come back. <clears throat> um, and actually Ben told me that, uh, or uh, another person, Jack Lamb, who goes to the rendezvous, also had a little bro jack and his had blade wrap. And Ben told me that some of his, you know, four that he had for showing off basically uh, also had blade wrap. So that was, you know, weird to hear because I really had thought that I had just sat on it and it was a, <laughs> you know, a me thing. Um, but the more Ben thought about it, the more we talked about it, it seemed like it was coming back. So I sharpened it out and then it came back actually in opening and closing it and talking about it. Um, so it was weird because it wasn't happening right away. Um, and it was one of those things where I could tell Ben was really, really worried and upset about it because he designed these knives, you know, in uh, 3D design, and he really has a passion for the designs that, that it's easy to see when you talk to him about it. Um, <clears throat> so I think he was really, really concerned. He cares about these knives being well made. They, they can't be perfect, right? No production knife and really no knife, but no production knife is perfect. In my experience, custom knives are just as likely, if not more likely, to be imperfect. But anyway, no knife is perfect, but he really wants them to be, you know, a, a really, really good premium product. So you could, t I, I, I could tell that he was kind of mauling in his mind what to do. And right away he said, of course, that if anybody had blade wrap on a Jack Wolf knives knife, that he would, you know, work with them to fix it. I think he stands behind his products 100%. <clears throat> he has a professional sharpener, <clears throat> so... That's usually how you fix blade wrap is by sharpening it. So you could, you know, he said, of course, people could send in a knife if they had blade wrap and have it sharpened out. Um, and that's how I fixed it on mine. I, and I believe fixed it on Jack, Jack's knife also. <coughs> uh, but then through the rendezvous, we actually took one of them apart and uh, I took a, a slow-mo video and, and could see what was happening. And it was over traveling and the edge was hitting the hump where the spring or the pin is and um actually it had a lot of momentum it had a good amount of bounce back so uh <clears throat> right away ben knew that that shouldn't be happening per his design what he said is he actually designed i'm gonna try not to sneeze here i have as i mentioned in my my i think most recent video I have very bad allergies, and they have been worse than normal this year. I, I was getting, uh, like, allergy shots and stopped because I moved, and so I just got back into that. Um, but anyway, hopefully I don't sneeze. But he said that he designed these so that that they wouldn't have blade wrap at all, but if they were going to over-travel, that they would actually um, hit in the, the flatter area, which would be better <clears throat> because... You know, when it hits this, <clears throat> excuse me, hump for the spring pin, that's a really concentrated area. So it's going to do more edge damage, going to concentrate that force versus, you know, on a flatter area, it'll do a lot less damage. Um, so I think that's intelligent design. Uh, it's kind of like a fail safe, even if you are planning for the knives not to have blade wrap at all. Um, and so that, that shouldn't have been happening. It was very clearly hitting at that, that pin for the spring. Um, so obviously that was concerning to him because 
you know, it's, it's a tough thing to fix. There's so many variables. There's the variable of the thickness of the spring, the distance of the spring pin to the pivot, which will change the uh, <coughs> um, spring tension. Um, and then there's the, thank you, Aberdeen Blades. Um, this is where I grew up actually. So uh, yeah, it was nice. It is nice, but Anyway, uh, there's a lot of different um, factors in, you know, the momentum and, and, and how much it can travel and all of that. So it's a hard thing to fix, and especially if you believe that you designed it so that it shouldn't ever be an issue. So um, he was trying to figure out why it was happening, and in talking uh, as, you know, the, the days went on, <clears throat> he realized that the design or the knives in person, the, the production knives actually didn't match up with his design drawings. So, um, you know, we, he doesn't publish who the OEM is. So I, I can say this without feeling like I'm, you know, attacking somebody too much or throwing someone under the bus. It seems like the knives just ended up not being in reality in their created state the way they were designed um, and the way that they had been agreed to be made. <clears throat> so um, Ben recalled them all from dealers. They haven't dropped yet. They're dropping, uh, or they were to drop on the 17th here this Friday. Ben recalled them all from dealers. And by the way, he checks every knife. And so he actually opens and closes every knife, you know, all three, you know, however many hundred there are. I don't know exactly the numbers on this run, but, um, <clears throat> And it's not a surprise to me that he didn't see this blade wrap because it didn't happen right away on mine or some of the other ones that, that he has seen have it. I know at least Austin of Traditional Pocket Knives, who is also at the Rendezvous, checks them, checks them all in addition. So, but it's not a surprise that it wasn't caught because it seems like it had to break in somewhat or something like that where, you know, maybe after I got it, I got it wet a couple times while I was canoeing and oiled it and stuff like that. Maybe it had to break in for it to get enough of that continued momentum to over travel. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's, it's not really a surprise that they didn't catch it either uh, Ben or Austin or whatever dealers, but he recalled them from the dealers. And I know that he's been in contact with the manufacturer, with the OEM and is working on how to fix it. Now, I, I don't know exactly what the current plan is. He told me several different ideas that he had to fix it. Um, I know that you can definitely get rid of blade wrap by sharpening the knife. It's just a question of how much uh, edge you're gonna have to take off. I, I did measure mine um, after I think, you know, the second or third sharpening, I measured the tallness of the blade in this dimension and then measured it again after I had sharpened it to the point where I'm, I'm pretty sure that the blade wrap is, is gone and not going to come back. And I took off about a half a millimeter, so not a whole lot. And I don't think for mine that it changed the profile a whole lot. Still has that super cool swoopy clip point. <clears throat> but it does change the shape a little bit. Um, so, you know, that's, that's one downside to that. Uh, other possible fixes, you know, they could redo certain parts of, of, the, of the knife to make it be the way that it was designed. Um, and I'm sure that there are other fixes that they're considering. I don't know what they're going to do, but I am confident that Ben will make sure that it's fixed. Uh, again, it's one of those things where if you haven't talked to him, it's hard for me to convince you of it. Uh, but having talked to him lots of times about the knives, and about other knives, GEC knives, um, he, he really, I think, cares about having them be right. So um, <clears throat> I'm sure that he's gonna find a, a satisfactory way. I know that he mentioned something um, about like a, you know, addition when, when they do come out uh, to kind of the kit that comes with them. They come with a, a microfiber cloth and a, and a slip. Um, and I, I don't, can't think of all the details on that or if there were details given. So I don't want to, you know, put anything out there that he doesn't want out there or that's wrong. But I'm sure that he'll find a way to fix them. 
And he doesn't know when that'll be. Right now, of course, you know, getting them back to where they're made, which is in China, and then having them fixed, who knows how long that takes, and then back to the US, and then back to dealers, and then setting up the drop. I would imagine it's not gonna be super, super soon. I agree, I think that was Aberdeen Blades, that it, it's the right move and a classy move, and not a surprise to me, having you know gotten to know Ben, that he did take the, the right route. Um, but I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if it was a little while before the little bro jack actually drops. Um, don't know, I don't know when it will be. I don't think Ben knows what it'll, when it will be. But I think it might be kind of not right away. And that's one thing that I guess, one thing that I'm sure of again is that, you know, Ben will take the time that he needs to make sure that it's right. Uh, so if you want more information or, or the direct quote from Ben, um, on his Instagram, he read off his statement live. Uh, he also posted it and sent out sent it out in an email to his email list. Um, so you can check that out on Instagram. Uh, and it, you know, it kind of says all this t same type stuff. But just I'm just the intention of this is to give you the background from my perspective. And then the last thing I want to talk about is that I really like this knife. I, I was looking forward to you know having the video come out. Uh, I, I don't have it completely finished, um, so I guess it doesn't hurt to have a, <laughs> a little bit of extra time, but um, I, I think that, you know, it's a pattern that a lot of people like, a, a boy's knife or a smaller jack. Um, it's very similar to the GEC number 15, which is hugely popular, and I just really like it. I mean, uh, so for me, I don't like blade wrap. Everybody knows that if you watch my videos. But I also don't like proud tips, and this is nowhere near having a proud tip. Um, so you can see it sits pretty deep in there. But not deep, and you know, it's, again, it's designed to not have blade wrap. But anyway, I have sharpened this, like I said, two, two to four times. I'm thinking like a very light sharpening just from using it, and then two normal sharpenings, and the last time was to like get rid of the blade wrap um, to, you know, give Ben a measurement of how much I took off, and it was about half a millimeter. Uh, but I really don't think that it's gonna come back. I have opened, after I sharpened it immediately, I opened and closed it, and not softly, like hard like that, right? Which is not normally how you close them, um, but I opened and closed it hard like that uh, 50 times, and there's no blade wrap at all. Um, you know, I, I've used it since then. Uh, reading Simon's quote here. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of, it seems like everybody's impressed with Ben's um, methods and, and approach to things. I think he's doing it right. But uh, I have, don't think that this is going to get played rap again. Um, I've opened and closed it a lot. I've used it. Uh, I've carried it and sat on it, you know. So, um, you know, if it was from sitting on it, the, the, pressing down in and it hasn't come back it doesn't seem like it's going to come back um so i'm happy with it i think that it's a really really cool little knife i've really enjoyed getting to use it great size you know you can get all four fingers on it um super easy to sharpen also especially for being uh, m390 steel because the hollow grind the really high deep hollow grind makes it so there's not very you know it's very thin behind the edge so you don't have to even if you're taking um you know half a millimeter of height off you're not taking a whole whole lot of actual steel off so i uh, appreciate that it's easy to sharpen if you did you know want to get rid of it yourself like you know i'm sure a few people who got them to do videos and stuff like that have done themselves including me um so it wasn't that hard to get rid of it uh, not as hard as, as some, you know, other knives uh, that I've had that just the blade wrap just just keeps coming back. And that is when you get real frustrated. Um, my wife can tell when a knife has blade wrap by like how I sigh, I think, while I'm sharpening. Because I just I'm like, oh, there's still blade wrap. Uh, so it's really nice that it seems to have, you know, gotten rid of it, crossed my fingers permanently. Um, so yeah, and I know that Ben is a huge fan of not having a blade stop. Uh, 
That's something that some modern slip joints have is a blade stop, but it changes the sound, it changes the feel a little bit, and it changes the construction. Um, but I know that he's considering uh, other, you know, features to help eliminate blade wrap while still having that classic walk and talk and feel that a traditional backspring and kick has. So while I really like my little bro, and uh, I, I don't, Ben hasn't said that he, you know, wants, wants the ones that he's sent out back or anything like that. I hope I get to you know, keep it because I'm really enjoying it. Um, but uh, I really enjoy mine and I'm interested to see what the fix is that he does. So this video has gone on a lot longer than I expected. Uh, I guess that's why, you know, knife thoughts. Oh, I should have switched the camera so that it was normal. Oh well, but it's gone on a lot longer. This happens because I like talking about knives. So um, anyway, uh, there's about 10 of you watching right now, I think. So uh, thank you for watching along. I hope it's been interesting and uh, definitely follow along, you know, Jack Wolf Knives. Oh, fighting back his knees again. Um, on Instagram and uh, he has a few videos, but mostly Instagram as well as Facebook. Follow along with Ben so that you have, you know, the most up-to-date information and uh, hope you get to get a little bro jack once they do finally drop. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, make sure you check out my other videos. I've got lots of videos. Like I say, I've got videos on the other Jack Wolf knives, Jack Wolf knife models. Um, I've got lots of videos on other slip joints as well as moderns and fixed blades and things like that. Uh, so check out my full channel. Uh, subscribe, click the bell so you know when I post new videos. Check out my social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com. Got, uh, I've got a little thing kind of in mind that I think is going to be kind of fun. Not a huge deal, but a uh, website thing um, for those of you who are fans of traditional knives and Barlow specifically. So hopefully that'll come to fruition. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.